Stop motion animation is a unique form of filmmaking that ties together a wide range of talents and skills to make it work. From the construction of miniature sets and stop motion armatures to the painstaking frame by frame animation of the action for the camera. It requires a knowledge of cinematography and lighting, of course, but also of pacing, action, anatomy, and movement. We're going to be visiting the studio of Brett Foxwell, a machinist and stop motion animator, and see just how he brings his little metal armatures to life. Hi there, I'm Brett Foxwell. I'm an engineer, machinist, and animator. My passion is stop motion animation. Now stop motion is a form of animation where actual puppets are manipulated incrementally from frame to frame. A camera records the action in a real world environment. And the end result is an animation where these dead puppets magically come to life. If you've seen a stop motion animated movie, the characters very likely had something like this inside of them. But there are many different types of armatures that can be made, from big fearsome creatures with sharp teeth, to big metallic powerful robots, to very tall, thin, humanoid creatures. I'm working on a new armature, and there's one final piece left to be made. So come with me to the machine shop and I'll show you how some of these parts are fabricated. This is the machine shop where I fabricate the armature pieces. For the shoulder joint we're making today, I'll start with half inch diameter tool steel and I'll cut it a little bit oversize to help with some of the fixturing for subsequent operations. And to cut it to length, we'll use a guillotine saw and clamp it in like so. And as with all machining operations, like the sign says, safety first. And here we have a half inch diameter by one and a half inch long piece of tool steel. Now with the piece rough cut, the first operation is to drill the hole for the tension screw. Now the tension screw is the pivot of the shoulder and also allows you to adjust the tension tighter or looser of the joint. And to do that, we'll be doing several drilling operations on the milling machine. So we've machined the slot inside the shoulder joint and the tang, which is a part of the upper arm, fits very nicely in it. So the only remaining operation is to turn, turn the outer, outer surface of this cylinder down into a swivel shaft, which we will do on the lathe. So this is the finished shoulder hinge pivot block. Came out very nicely, though it took hours of precision machining to accomplish. And it's just one of dozens and dozens of parts that go into a finished armature. So let's go back to the studio and put a puppet together. Here we are at the shop assembling the armature. It takes typically about 30 minutes to assemble one of these if everything goes smoothly. Um, this is the shoulder joint, the shoulder swivel block I machined earlier. And we're putting the shoulder tang into the slot and it fits, fits nice and tightly into that, which is what we want. And it gets attached with the tension screw. 
Now this is a hinge joint, which pretty much just allows a, a hinge action in, on, on, a, on a single movement on a single axis. The other kind of armature joint, which is much more common, is the ball and socket joint, which is a ball and a clamping block, which allows the block to be clamped onto the ball and a screw allows the tension of the joint to be adjusted. And the third type of joint is a swivel joint. Um, and this allows a kind of swiveling action like so for the, for the shoulder. And it is held in place um, by a groove, which is similar to the groove that we cut on the bottom of the shoulder swivel block. Um, and the bottom joint, bottom part of that joint that we machined earlier is a swivel joint and it's held in place with one screw that fits into a groove that we turned on the bottom of the shaft. So each of these joints have a screw associated with it, which allows the tension of the joint to be adjusted. Now this is really important because some animators prefer a looser tension to the whole puppet, which just allows very easy, easy motions without a lot of, lot of effort. Other animators prefer every joint to be very tightly tensioned, which just, just means um, you have to push harder to get a motion out of it, but it's, um, you won't bump something by mistake. You have to do it really deliberately to get the motion you want out of it. The tensioning is also really important for something like a walk cycle, which allows you to um, tension the joints on each side of the body differently. So for the side of the body where the foot is planted, and these feet are planted, we screw them right into the set. So it's just locked down to the set, which really helps to mimic the, the, the effect of gravity on, on a real human. The, the foot that's planted during a walk is really fixed down. So to do that with an armature, we just screw it, bolt it right into the set. And so that side of the puppet is tensioned very tightly, which allows the puppet to be supported during the walk cycle where the other side of the body is in motion. And that other side of the body is typically loosened up. The, the tension in all the joints is loosened to allow a smooth and fluid animation during the part of the body on the side of the body that's in motion. So this is a typical animation setup. We have the camera connected to the computer, which is capturing the frames. We have the backdrop and illuminated by the movie lights. And then we have the main character, which is the armature. Um, he's going to be doing just a basic walk cycle, and I'm going to be animating him um, just frame by frame, how, how stop motion goes. Um, the, the increments are going to be very small. You're not going to see a lot from one frame to the next, but over time, the frames do add up, and then you'll start to see some real action happening. So I will start animating the first, the first frame. Then I'll capture it on the computer. And I'll, I'll look at it. That was actually a pretty, that was a pretty coarse movement, so. I'm just starting this, so I'm getting the, getting the feel for the action. To... And the walking, it's not, it's not just the legs. I mean, it's, it's really, a, it's a full body full body motion so you kind of kind of animate which is putting putting most of my fingers on the puppet and just kind of almost moving the body which is the, the center of gravity moving the body forward and letting the legs follow So in this puppet, um, all the joints are, are tensionable and this is really important to get the kind of the feel of the puppet correct to do, to do a walk cycle. The joints have to support the puppet um, in, in pretty much any pose and often in something like a walk cycle, it has to hold the puppet, like the one ankle 
and the legs of the, the fixed foot have to hold the entire puppet up all the way until the moving foot is just about to touch down. Then when the moving foot does touch down um, and it gets locked to the surface, then um, the other side has to be loosened up to allow it to um, then be animated as, as that foot gets picked up off the ground and moved through the air. So that frame is just 1 24th of a second, and it takes 24 to 36 frames just for the character to take a single step. So that's the reality of stop motion. It's someone spending days and weeks machining these little metal skeletons, and then someone else spending days and weeks animating the character to, to get a full performance. Um, so it's a lot of very slow and tedious work, but it's, it's really rewarding. When you see the end result, um, it, it really makes it all worth it in the end, and I love it.